Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Health Professional Radio. We'll be talking with Dr. Charles Vega. He's joining us here to talk about the launch of It Takes Two. It Takes Two is a new health initiative to elevate the importance of complete testing and early diagnosis of kidney disease, particularly among those who have type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure and a greater risk for it. He's also going to talk about working with Rob Bass to release a, a remix of his 80s hit, It Takes Two, to underscore how it takes two people, a patient and a healthcare professional, to test to uh, detect kidney disease. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Charles Vega. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Neil Howard. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here. Well, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. What is your, your specialty? Where is it that you practice? And then let's jump right into how and why you got involved with the It Takes Two Health Initiative. So my name is Chuck Vega. I'm a family physician and professor of family medicine at the University of California at Irvine. We also run our uh, program medical education for the Latino community. And I'm proud to have been in Orange County's largest uh, safety net clinic as a family doctor for the past 27 years as my clinical practice. Now, the It Takes Two Health Initiative, I'd said that it was created to elevate the importance of complete testing and early diagnosis of kidney disease. What types of kidney disease? Is there just kidney disease or are there different types, different levels? Yeah, for sure. That's a great point. And urine certainly, I'm sure, sees a lot of kidney disease. And most kidney disease, especially in the United States, is caused by the combination of diabetes and hypertension. Together, those account for about 70 to 80 percent of cases of kidney disease. And certainly in my patient population, um, almost all Latino, um, almost all uh, poor folks, uh, it is definitely an epidemic. And so, therefore, uh, we have to be very mindful of the complications of um, of diabetes and hypertension. And one of the, the major ones uh, that many patients don't necessarily think about until it's a, until it can be too late uh, is kidney disease. I should also mention really quickly, that means that at least 20% of kidney disease is not due to um, hypertension or diabetes. I was actually just talking uh, with someone uh, today who I suspect might have glomerular nephritis. Um, even though she has very mild diabetes, her, her kidney uh, disease looks different than what I typically see. She's younger and her kidney disease is more severe at this stage. So I always want to keep those things in mind, polycystic kidney disease, uh, um, autoimmune kidney disease, other types of uh, renal problems that, uh, that, that kind of veer off our normal path with diabetes and hypertension. How exactly did you get involved with It Takes Two? Well, I was, I was told about this project because uh, we know that, um, unfortunately, uh, most folks who have chronic kidney disease don't even know it because many of them don't have symptoms. And so we have to be screening for it. And it does take two tests. So I think that clinicians are generally pretty good at uh, measuring a uh, blood work uh, and getting a usually a creatinine for an estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR. But we don't do as well in terms of getting the other main part of the equation there when it comes to kidney disease, which is a urine test, a urine albumin to creatinine creatinine ratio, or UACR. And so we really want to come up, and when we're ordering the blood test, always think, hey, it takes two to make the diagnosis of kidney disease, and so therefore you want to make sure that you order the UACR as well. And then, of course, as soon as I heard that they were calling this campaign for public awareness, it takes two, I asked, hey, are you going to play the Rob Bass song? And uh, there was silence (laughs) on the other end because they were already (laughs) thinking about it. So, you know, great minds, yeah? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. well, uh, minds of a certain age, remember, (laughs) like, uh, getting down to that song for years and years. Definitely. It's it's been around a little bit, but it still holds up. When we're talking about chronic kidney disease and and people not knowing, is this two test, has this always been the norm? Yeah, that's a great question. So for for diabetes, it has been. So really, we've wanted to test uh, uh, the urine for... For many years, it's gone back in the guidance. For hypertension, it's still somewhat controversial. Mm-hmm. In Europe, they directly say you should be doing a urine test annually. In, a, in the United States, 
Uh, it's kind of a little bit more left up to the provider that you know, we should check a urine, but the frequency is left up in the air. But there will be new recommendations coming out in 2024 uh, regarding screening the general population. And I have a feeling there's going to be a much more aggressive approach to screening for kidney disease across all adults, diabetes, hypertension, or no. Do you anticipate us following the path of the European healthcare uh, professionals who are recommending every year? I do. In my practice, I do check every year because what we now, a couple things. Uh, one is that independent of the control of diabetes or blood pressure, uh, the presence of kidney disease is a cardiovascular risk factor. Most folks with chronic kidney disease don't die of kidney disease. They die of heart attacks and strokes. And uh, so, therefore, we want to know about that other risk factor because we can do something about it. We now have three treatments for many patients with chronic kidney disease that are effective and before we we didn't have um, this this ability, and so therefore maybe there was uh, the sense of helplessness helplessness on the part of clinicians and patients. Gosh, we can't really do much about this. Now we know we can bend back the risk for both end stage kidney disease, meaning dialysis for many folks, uh, and then two the risk of cardiovascular events as well. Now you said that you anticipate us following Europe's lead. What do you hope that healthcare professionals take away from this initiative, and what do you hope patients take away from this initiative? That's a great question, and I think that uh, what I really hope is that uh, the the it takes two double meaning kicks in. That it takes two that we're all on the same page. Both clinician and patient are on the same page regarding uh, the need for two tests um, to check for the presence of chronic kidney disease. And that either one can initiate the uh, the test. So if you're a patient, I would encourage you, hey, I, especially if you have hypertension or diabetes, hey, what is my urine test result? And have I had a urine test in the past year? If not, you know, ask to get one. And clinicians, we should be aware that we should be uh, ordering these tests on a routine basis to monitor kidney function because it does matter. Early on in our conversation, you mentioned poor folks, type 2 diabetes, hypertension. How do you recommend that someone with these conditions ensure that they receive optimal care because uh, there are disparities in health care, as we're all aware? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so we know that uh, hypertension, diabetes, disproportionately affect people of color, and it's the, uh, the complications of those diseases are higher, like kidney disease, in people of color overall. Why is that? Um, there might be some genetic component, but a lot of it comes down to social determinants of health. And one of the main things is just having a usual place of care. I, I'm obviously, I'm a primary care doctor, so I'm a big believer in primary care. That's really where this care begins. Uh, many patients don't have access to a nephrologist, even when they have chronic kidney disease. If you're from a low-income area, from a, from a very rural area, or for, from an inner city where there's not that many providers available who actually you know take you in in their clinic, the clinics are overwhelmed. Uh, so therefore, we have to you know practice health equity. We want to sp- spend some special attention on those individuals who are most at risk and risk of complications and make sure they get screened. And that means greater access to care and empathic care that understands where the patients are coming from. You mentioned uh, folks of a certain age remember jamming on It Takes Two. You've got to tell me what it was like working with Rob Bass and then tell us where we can go and learn more about It Takes Two. Well, so Rob Bates is a very personable guy, um, and, you know, one of his best friends, unfortunately, had severe uh, uh, chronic kidney disease, so he knows about this experience on a personal level. This is a a personal issue uh, for him, and so he's passionate and he's talented, and so so it's really great to see that combination of things. He was also really down to earth and willing to do whatever he could to to really uh, use his message and his medium, which is music, uh, to reach out to folks in a different way than, than certainly anything that I can accomplish. That's, that's far different from my skill set. And where can we go and learn more? Right. So uh, for healthcare professionals, you can go to ckdtesting.com. And then for uh, patients, you can find some great resources at testyourkidneys.com. So it's ckdtesting.com for healthcare professionals, testyourkidneys.com for, uh, for patients. Uh, go on and, and get educated and, uh, and become an advocate yourself. It was absolutely a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for having me. And remember, it takes two to make a thing go right. Absolutely. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Charles Vega. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio. 